Hi guys! Wham-Bam has a new cool build plate for 3D printers. This one is made of carbon fiber and it's available for several 3D printer models. We have tested the new plate and in this video we will show you all the test results. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in this video, we will show you the latest build plate from Wham Bam. At the moment of this video, the plate is not yet available for sale, but it will be available as pre-sale on August 13th. If you want to get it a bit earlier, check our video description for the link. Also, during the pre-sale time, this new model will be available for a group of machines, but should be available for other printers very soon. The one we tested is the one for the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. It has the same size as the stock one. This new plate is a composite of epoxy and carbon fiber. Being a real carbon fiber plate, it has much better quality than the fake carbon fiber ones that are being sold and which produce the carbon fiber effect on the prints. In fact, this new plate from Wham Bam was designed to provide superior quality and better results during printing and not for the traditional carbon look on the prints. Actually, the plate leaves almost no markings whatsoever, unlike the imitation carbon fiber sheets in PEO or PET. The plate comes with a thank you note and a couple of Wham Bam stickers. It also comes with the small code stickers so the X1 printer can recognize. There are a number of things that work differently on this plate when compared with all other plates on the market. The first one is that, for it to be able to provide its full potential, we first need to let the plate heat up. This is because of the properties of the materials and how the heat spreads throughout the plate. Five minutes at least of preheat should be done before starting the print. One thing we did was, on the Bamboo Lab slicer, we edited the G-code for the heat bed preheat sequence by adding the line G4 space S420. This means the printer will start to heat up the bed and then wait 420 seconds, which is 7 minutes, to allow the entire plate to reach the set temperature correctly. After that, it will resume and start the print. The Bamboo Lab printer uses the nozzle to do the leveling, which means the nozzle touches the build plate several times during the leveling sequence. At that time, the nozzle, which starts hot, lowers its temperature down to 140 degrees C. This is the default leveling temperature of the nozzle. The build plate doesn't get damaged and doesn't get any marking on the surface from the nozzle during the leveling. For all the tests, we used filaments from Filament PM. As for temperature settings, we used the provide table as reference. Regarding the printer, we used our P1S and X1C. On the X1C, we didn't notice any issues with the LiDAR sensor on this plate. Printing with PLA filaments shows no issues whatsoever. The plate was set at 65 degrees C and the filament sticks very well. With the plate cold, the printed parts come out easily. Printing with PETG was also super easy. We don't need to add any release agent on the plate and we didn't see any warpage during the print. Removing the PETG prints from the plate was not hard. We only let it cool for a bit and the print came out without any effort. 
if by any chance the material is hard to remove, we can add water while bending the plate to remove the print. Printing with ABS was also okay. We did not use any glue to print our test model. However, when trying to print with ASA, it kept failing a few minutes after starting the print. Once we added glue on the build plate, the test print was able to finish without any issues. And for the results and for PLA filament, the tests came out all okay. The filament sticks very well during printing and releases from the plate easily at the end. This is the test print done with PETG. It looks smooth and without warping. As for the test print done with ABS, it also looks smooth. However, we detect a very, very slight warpage on the corners. It's so small that it can be easily fixed with slicer settings. With ASA, and as we mentioned, was the only one that we needed to use glue to print. Looks smooth as well, but for this one, we got the markings of the glue on it. We printed again with liquid glue, but the result was the same. We printed again, but this time with bad adhesive spray. And this time, the print came out smooth and without marks. One thing we noticed on all the prints are some light markings of the carbon fiber. It's a bit hard to capture them on camera, so we took some close-up pictures instead. These little spots are from the carbon fiber pattern of the build plate. The only one that didn't get these markings was the ASA print done with the bed adhesive spray. The spray acted like a barrier between the plate surface and the filament, and this way preventing the spots to be formed. Before each print, make sure the plate is clean and without any filament remains. Cleaning this carbon fiber plate can be done simply with water and dishwasher soap. IPA will not work as good. Well, this is it guys. These are the results of the tests we have done so far for the new carbon fiber build plate from WAMBAM. Don't forget to check the links in the description if you want to know more about it. And we will see you guys next time. Bye!